Hi, welcome to Epic Men. My name is Jacob, and this is my good friend Gary, Gary House. Gary House, and we are <laughs> excited to be with you today. Yes, um, we really do appreciate you taking the time to watch and listen, yes. and we'd love to hear you know what you have to say in the mm -hmm. comments wherever you're watching this. We'd love to hear right. you know your two cents on the scriptures that we're yes. going through. Yes, so we're going through James. We had done Proverbs before, and that was so much fun. We're looking at James and we're going, you know, thought by thought. So mm -hmm. we have a couple verses here in chapter 1, and it's verse 13 through 16 that we're going to read in the mm -hmm. Passion Translation. It says, When you're tempted, don't ever say, God is tempting me. For God is incapable of being tempted by evil, and he is never the source of temptation. Mm -hmm. Instead, it is each person's own desires and thoughts that drag them into evil and lure them away into darkness. So, my friends, don't be fooled by your own desires. Evil desires give birth to evil actions. And when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. Wow, there's, some, there's a lot of stuff in here. Wow. And uh, I just want to maybe start off by saying there was a time, and you know, this verse talks about temptation, and there was a mm -hmm. time in my life, and, and I mean, we're, we're human, right? It's still mm -hmm. happening, but there's temptation that hits all of us, yes. right? And there was a particular time in my life where it just, it felt like it was really strong and coming wow. hard every day, every day. And I was just, I love the Lord sincerely. I'm like, Lord, I'm in this funky cycle that mm -hmm. I know I'm not supposed to be in. Am, am, I, am I talking to anybody else on the other side here? <laughs> and I felt like the Lord said, read Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8. There's your, your answers in there. Okay. So long story short, I get to Romans 6, 11. I had been reading those chapters a lot. I get to Romans 6, 11. It says this. It says, consider yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, stop and look at and read it closer. It says, mm -hmm. consider yourself dead to sin. And that was a powerful word just right there, the consider yourself. And he said, mm -hmm. you're thinking about yourself all wrong. He said, you're, you are thinking that you're still a sinner. Mm -hmm. He said, you have to change your mind and consider yourself dead and consider yourself a new person in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me this you know, easy way to kind of get out of the funk. He, he said... If you sin or if you mm -hmm. screw up, mm -hmm. don't stay there because what happens is, I'm sure you guys have experienced this, it's this guilt cycle. Right. And, and you get right. in guilt and then you get in shame. And then what happens is you think about it. You think, oh, I screwed up again. I'm such a sinner. I'm considering myself yeah. dead. And, and you get in this cycle. And then you just keep doing it over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was. Mm -hmm. And God said, get out of that. And said, he said, if you screw up, that's okay. You say, you repent. You say, God, forgive me. Right. but. I am no longer that person anymore. Right. I, and I would specifically say, I would say, nope, that's not me. Good. And I would just jump out on over <laughs> into the new creation, the new Jacob that God created. Right. And this absolutely set me free. Um, I wow. stopped thinking of myself as the sinner. I stopped focusing on my shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And I focused on that I was alive in Christ. Amen. And um, I just, all that stuff just started fluffing off of me um, without, you know, me having to... to do a 12 step, you know, <laughs> course that lasted three years. I mean, yes. it was, it was just all, all, so I would love to encourage you. Look at that verse. If you're struggling today with yeah. temptation, with That's sin, good. look at what that verse says in Romans 6, 11, and uh, you don't have to struggle anymore mm -hmm. because God has, has made you dead to that stuff. It's, right. it, you, we do have a choice though, right? Right. Right. So we do have it, and that's where it is. We have a choice to sin. That's where Adam, Adam didn't have a sin nature, but he chose to sin, and, and mm -hmm. it's the same with us. So mm -hmm. think about that. You don't have to do those things anymore. You could be dead to that. You could be alive to God in Christ. I'm going to start talking now and let Gary <laughs> share some things, but I'm really excited to That's share this good. with you because it brought a lot of freedom to that my life. That is so good, though. That is such a beautiful example, too, of where all of us are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't yeah, care yeah. who you are, yeah. how long you walk with Jesus, there is always points of temptation to lead you into doing the wrong thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to quickly kind of summarize from this verse the steps of temptation, okay? Yeah, good. That's great. With us, and this is not going to be a huge teaching, but I just want to draw it to your attention because oftentimes what we do is we think, oh, man, I blew it, and you talk to people and all and said, yeah, I got tempted. So I just really sinned bad before God. And I said, okay, so what did you do with that temptation? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I really didn't do anything, hmm. but, you know, I was tempted. So, you know, I blew it. Uh, I said, no, 
yeah, yeah. And say, let's go back to the scripture. And we go back to these verses. Good. And here's what it says to us. First of all, it's the idea to do wrong. So an idea comes into your pop in your head. Hey, man, we've got a what a hundreds of, of thoughts that come in and out of our head every day. So much, you yeah. know, all the time. Yeah. And many of them are good, but not all of them. You yeah, know right. that we have pop into our head. An idea doesn't mean sin or that I've sinned. Yeah. Good. Number two is that the idea, if I begin to think on it, begins to gain appeal. Wow. Think oh. Yeah, well, hey, that might be good or whatever. Mm -hmm. And moving on, number three is the idea becomes wanted. Oh, now good. I make a thought, whoa, you know, that'd be kind of cool to do that mm -hmm. and begin to involve it. Number four is the idea is uh, the thought becomes something that could really be done. Hey, I think I could do this. This yeah. could be accomplished and done. This would be cool to do. Mm -hmm. And all the emotional aspect yeah. may enter into it with it. Number wow. five is the idea becomes a planned event. Wow. Yeah. Now I've okay. put action to it in my mind. Yeah. I haven't done it yet, sure. but I've begun to take uh, format the way in which it can be done. Good. good. So forth. That's really good. And then number six is the idea itself is actually done. I take an action to it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. now at this point, this is the point where it becomes sin. So the That's idea, good. while it's still developing in my head, I can still say, no, I'm yeah, not going yeah, there. No, yeah, not going to do good. this. Great. And I'm not going to indulge myself, whatever that is. Okay. And we're talking about sometimes seconds sure. in, in the yes, development of these steps. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. It can be seconds. It can be days. It could be months. Hmm. You know, as far as time frame goes. Yeah. And yeah. I've dealt with all of those with people. I've experienced them myself. Sure. Where you've had that grappling. But the last number seven point is the most horrendous mm. because it is really, to put it in, in my words, is the fulfillment of taking action to an idea and sinning yeah. actually separates us from God. Wow. Mm. You know? mm. Now, somebody's going to say, yeah, I know what you mean, man. I, I felt separated from God for how long? Mm. And my question back to you is going to be simply this. How long are you going to stay separated yeah, from God? That's good. Really okay, good. Yeah. God has provided us a way. John, First uh, John one nine, He says, "If you confess your sins, that God is faithful and He's just to forgive us of our sins and mm -hmm. cleanse us yes. from all the crap that got us into the mess we got ourselves into." <laughs> is that the okay? Gary translation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> I kind love of that. free it's translation. So true. But God comes along. To, he doesn't want to leave us there. Yeah. So correct. He makes a way. For us to get past our sin so good. and the yielding to temptation. But I, I want you to notice in here that James is very clear in saying, if you're tempted, don't you ever say, oh, God tempted me to do this. No, he didn't. Yeah, right. Why? Because, and I like what one, one author put it this way. He said that God is not doesn't have an appeal towards sin. Hmm. Sin is not appealing to him. That's so so if it isn't so part of his nature yeah. and character, then why would God come along just for kicks and say, I just think I'll, I'll tempt Jacob and see what right. I can do. Let's see what he'll do. <laughs> you know, just kind of let him kind of dangle with wow, it. Yeah. You know? It has no inroad in him. <clears throat> right. There's no, no action there's that he there. wants to take. Yeah. So why would he try to pass that on to you and me? Right. See? Yeah. yeah. So I just yeah. want to help arrange rearrange our thinking about that if if that's a problem for you and wondering mm. you know well why did god let this happen he didn't mm. so good but right. we do have an enemy of our soul that's the it. devil yep. that wants to come along and say i want to do everything i can to trip up that person yeah. and cause them to sin and then i'm going to take what their action and i'm going to shove it in god's face wow Yep. That's pretty blunt. That I is know. Very, it's true, though. But yeah. but I think we need to understand that yeah. and realize that's what the devil's after doing. Yeah, he wants to say to, to God, saying, "See, there's your kid down there, and you thought that they were really good, but they're not." Wow. And yeah. look what they did. Look yeah. what they gave into. Gosh. Yeah. But God so still good. provides the way to get past that. Mm -hmm. If we'll just take advantage, it goes back to your, like you said before, yeah, yeah. my will, yes. my choice. Right, sure. I can choose to now follow God, even after I've sinned, yeah, that's and do the so, right thing. That's so good. I love in First John, you said, 
He forgives. He's faithful <clears throat> to forgive us. But mm-hmm. then we forget the, the next part. Right. He, he'll cleanse us from right. all unrighteousness. Right. That doesn't mean just one time. Like, he'll totally wipe that thing right. clean. So you, you, you don't, I mean, I'm not saying that all temptation will go away, but there's no lure anymore. It's, I mean, right. he'll, he'll, he'll wash those desires yeah. away. So um, anyway, I'm just so grateful. For, <laughs> he's so faithful in my, if I'm doing great or if I'm in my shortcomings, he's so faithful to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's true for any of you that are listening today. Yeah. yeah, it's not just for Jacob and me, but it's also for all of us. Because we all need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so God makes himself available. And if you're struggling with something right now that you, as you're listening, and you're saying, man, I just, I can't, I'm not getting past this. I'm just not, I don't know what to do. God does. Yeah. And if you'll just simply turn to him today, right now, and just say, God, I don't want to be this person. I don't want to continue doing whatever it is that you may be involved with. God can come with his ability and enable you to overcome those things because that's his desire for you mm-hmm. is that you overcome and move past those things to what he wants you to be. So why don't you join with us right now? Let's pray together, okay? God, we come together not with any sense of self-righteousness where we feel like, hey, man, we've got it together. We know what we're doing and, and yeah. we don't have this kind of problem. God, we do. Yeah, right. Each one of us face that struggle every day to some degree or another. And Lord, we come with our brothers and sisters today and simply pray with them that, God, there will come the forgiveness, there'll come the cleansing, there'll come the strengthening and the enablement to move past whatever it is is seeking to hamper their progress in moving forward with you, O Lord. Loving Father, come along to them right now and let your presence be made real to them your forgiveness be made real, your cleansing be real, and Lord, the peace that you bring to settle into our hearts and minds over each one today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for being a part of this time. We really appreciate it. And I'll listen to Jacob and I just kind of babble along (laughs) and so forth this year. But sincerely, you know, we pray it's a blessing to you. Give us any comments you like, got questions or something like that. We'd love to even just be praying for you and with you as well. And until next time, continue to join with us in learning how to become epic men.